The Democrats have criticized Mitt Romney for his vehement rhetoric against China as the Obama administration seeks to improve relations with Beijing. State Secretary Hillary Clinton's in the Chinese capital for talks, but the cancellation of a scheduled meeting with the vice president and presumed next leader is being seen as a snub to her. Well, Clinton's visit comes amid rising diplomatic tensions. Beijing has warned Washington to stay out of the country's territorial disputes with several other nations off the Chinese coast. The communist state has threatened to use force to defend its claims to a chain of islands there. Clinton says America's position is neutral, but Beijing has accused Washington of meddling in the region's affairs. Let's cross to uh, Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar for some reaction and insight. He's joining me right now from New York. Pepe, earlier this year, Obama made it clear that Washington views China as a potential threat and America's shifting more military focus to the Asia-Pacific region. So why is the U.S. now uh, trying to mend ties with Beijing? <laughs> you know, the, the only way they should mend ties, if they sell maybe a Michelle Obama to Beijing to talk to the, to the next leadership, you know. <laughs> With Hillary Clinton, it's impossible. Her cut, let's put it this way, in Beijing is horrible. She's not respected even in the media. If you read what uh, Xinhua and Global Times have written about her, it's, it gets even personal nowadays. They don't believe it. They know that the whole thing, the strategic pivot that was announced by Obama early this year at the Pentagon, by the way. It's a strategic gaming, by the way. And they know that they simply cannot trust what any U.S. administration and the Pentagon is saying because they know that for the past 20 years or so, the Pentagon has been wargaming this competition clash between the U.S. and China. So the next leadership is going to be even more weary of what's coming from the U.S. If we have a Romney administration, expect even no visits to China in the, in the near future. Because uh, uh, Mitt Romney himself, on the record, he's been blaming China for everything bad under the sun that is happening in the U.S. But surely both, both need each other, certainly economically. I mean, there we have, what, trillion dollars of U.S. debt being held by China? Uh, the, the two can't really afford to fall out, can they? No, of course not. And look, there is a rumor in Beijing these past few days and week that Beijing is basically rearranging their gold reserves into one kilo pieces and they're going to flood the market sooner or later and they're going to back up a new reserve currency with the absolutely astounding amount of gold that they have. Of course, this is speculation. It's been discussed in Hong Kong a lot. I was there la last week. Uh, this goes to show that uh, there is, of course, a symbiosis between the international financial system and China is a big part of this uh, rejuvenation, let's put it this way, it's not at least uh, preventing the utter collapse of Western capitalism. But at the same time, they are working to change the rules of the game. The rules of the game for them, the next step is an international reserve currency or a basket of currencies, including the yuan. And everywhere you go all over the world, people are asking, OK, we want convertible yuan want because then we're going to place our investments in yuan and not in U.S. dollars anymore. Uh, Pepe, talking about uh, economics there, what about the military aspect too? Obviously, America's shifting more military focus to Asia Pacific. Is there really any danger that we could see some form of military conflict between the two powers? No, no. Uh, basically, what the Pentagon has been uh, war gaming and gas gaming, let's put it this way, they want to have a sort of a Pentagon patrol of the Indian Ocean, the Strait of Malacca. They already have it, in fact. The Strait of Malacca and the South China Sea. In the South China Sea, in a more indirect way. This is going to be subcontracted to U.S. allies in ASEAN. So the association of the Southeast Asian nations, ASEAN, now is being more or less manipulated, especially by the State Department under Hillary, to become a sort of a advanced proxy of U.S. interest in Southeast Asia. This is not going to work. There are 10 countries in ASEAN. 
disparate agendas. You have, uh, for instance, Myanmar, which is a wild card. They're trying to play the U.S. against China. You have very staunch allies of the U.S., like Singapore, for instance, which is a kind of aircraft carrier of the U.S. implanted right in the middle of Southeast Asia. We have Indonesia, who wants to be independent. We have the Philippines, of course, very much attached to the U.S., but it's a, a mixed bag. And all of them, they need very good relations, commercial trade relations with China, plus the fact that they have a very important Chinese diaspora in each of these countries. And they happen to be part of the business elite in all these countries as well. So it's counterproductive if the Pentagon thinks they're going to provoke China into some kind of military confrontation in their own backyard, which is the South China Sea. So briefly, it's all about image and self-perception, is it? I mean, the US is still considered the world's only superpower yet. Yes. How far behind is China now and how long could it actually take Beijing to catch up and perhaps even dominate on the international stage? Just very briefly. Look, very briefly, militarily is impossible. The Pentagon has a perception that the, Chi the Chinese Navy is modernizing very fast and will catch up with the US Navy. No, this is going to take at least 15 to 20 years. It's a long way away. They don't even have a nuclear uh, aircraft carrier, for instance. Uh, they're working on the first one, for, for that matter. So basically, this is a, a policy of intimidation of the Chinese in their own backyard, especially in the South China Sea, because of the oil and gas that needs to be exploited for China as well, but for other countries in Southeast Asia as well. And the, the Americans found a way to infiltrate the problem. And the Chinese, they, they write about it now outspokenly. They know what's going on. The thing is, what are they going to do to counterpunch the U.S.? Live from New York, Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar. Thanks a lot.